understand by and by so people can eat lunch with God. You don't think about natural lunch. You think about lunch with God. Don't worry, I'm in the book. I'm in the book. Genesis 12 and 1. Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. Abram, I want you to come out from amongst them, and be ye separate. It not only is the way we dress, it's the way we think. It's the way we act. It's the way we react. It's the conversations we have. It's the way we live our life. It's the way we love people. It's the way we reach for people. When God said, get out of there, he didn't just mean geographically. He meant every part of your life. Separate yourself from the world. Get out of their thinking and their mindset. Stop dealing with things the way you dealt with them when you didn't know Jesus. Stop reacting how you used to react when you didn't know Jesus. Didn't you tell me a story once you were golfing? And uh, some guy was cursing a blue streak all through the 18 holes or whatever it was. And at some point he said, well, I'm a minister. And he said, well, praise God, brother. I'm, I'm spirit-filled. <laughs> at some point, who you say you are should at some point be reflected in what people see. Get out of their thinking and their mindset. Stop dealing with the things the world, the way the world does. We always bring Egypt into Israel, don't we? And it says, get thee out of thy country and thy kindred. We bring people with us that we should never bring. The Lord says, Get out from it all. And I remember I lost friends when I came to this truth. And it wasn't. It was God saying, are you going to live for me fully or are you just going to be on the sidelines? He brought me to a place of decision after decision after decision. How bad do you want this, Dennis? I remember one of my family members cut me off because I disagreed with something. And they left the... They, they talked to me on the phone, and, and they said, you got to tell me what you think about this, and if you don't like it, then well. And I got off that phone, and I told the Lord, I said, God, I, I don't think I can live for you the way you desire me to live for you. That's what I told the Lord. Bawling and crying because of the pressures from the world. Anybody know what I'm talking about? People don't mind if you go to church. Just don't live like his church. You can go to church all day long, but you just keep acting, looking, being like the world, and they'll be fine with you. But as soon as you start to step out from amongst them, that's when judgment comes. But I came to a place in my life, I said, God, I have to get to know you in your fullness and what you have for me. And it's made all the difference. Don't bring anybody from your father's house. So he brings Lot, his nephew. I told you not to bring anybody. And he brought lies. All through Genesis for several chapters, Abraham comes out of Ur of the Chaldees, and then he goes to several different places. And this is what he says. He says, Sarah's my sister, because at 75, she was uh, she was in Pentecostal GQ, I guess. She was a looker. 
And so he was afraid of what men would do. And so he began to lie to Pharaoh and he began to lie to another king. He said, oh, it's my sister. Now, it was partially true because they were related. But he lied to save his own skin. Why did it take 25 years for the promise to be born? Because sometimes we can come into the church and we can sit in a pew and we can worship and we can dance and we can preach. But God is still waiting for us to get out of the world mentality before he shows us his promise. But right away, this is how wonderful God is and this is how loving God is. Verse 2. I will make thee a great nation. I will bless thee, and I will make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curse thee, and in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. God loves us so much that even when we're not where we need to be, he'll still give us a dream. He'll still give us a promise. He'll still give us a vision. And there's promises lingering in this church. But you notice what happens. God doesn't give the fullness of the promise. He, it's all generic. I'm going to do this. I'm going to save your family. I'm going to give you ministry. I'm going to do this in your life. I'm going to send you on a mission trip. I'm going to, well, God, I feel that. When's it happening? When's it happening? When's it happening? He's waiting for our character to line up to the promise. Abraham had, had cattle. He had wealth. He had people, but he still wasn't walking in promise. He had a promise. But it, sometimes we go, my bank account's a little bit better than it was. Things are happening a little bit better than they were. So I must be walking in God's promise. No, no, no. You can have money in the bank. You can have people around you. And you can have other people saying, wow, you're doing really great. That doesn't mean that you're walking in what God has for you truly. Separation and consecration will always be the foundation of this church. Bless you, Kathy. Because other than that, it's just a program. It's a swelling. And it's not God's revival. It's man-made, engineered revival. And some, we struggle because we go, God, why don't I have promise yet? Why am I not walking in promise yet? Because he's waiting for you to get rid of a lot in your life. He's waiting for you to stop telling half-truths to people. But he's still reaching. Oh, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to help you. I'm going to make your name great. I'm going to do wonderful things. This primary desire of God for separation is not so that you can sit in the corner until Jesus comes back twiddling your thumbs going well now I have to drink green tea for the rest of my life and I can't do anything fun didn't my wife show me some Facebook name of who drinks green tea 98% no she said when you drink green tea 98% of what fun you had left in your life is gone so are you green tea drinkers not personally. The young people are like, what's green tea? He has a specific promise for each and every one of us. And it's wonderful and powerful and greater than anything we could desire. You know what happens with a lot of folks? Is they get tired of waiting for God. They get tired of working on their character. And they figure that they've arrived and they're okay and they're ready for the promise. And maybe God just doesn't know. He needs a little help. Anybody ever help the Lord? Lord, I know you've been doing this a while, but I'm kind of special. And I could, you could use my help right now. I've done it. And so they create an Ishmael in their life. And when Sarah went to, to Abraham and said, take my handmaid, that's probably God's promise. God didn't tell them, yea, your nay. Because when it's your kingdom, you can build your kingdom. 
But when it's his kingdom, you have to wait on the Lord to build your kingdom. That's the hard part. God, not by my might, nor by my power, but by my spirit. And so they birthed an Ishmael, which we're still dealing with today. Genesis 12 to 17, the chapters, the Lord is allowing Abraham to get the world out of his thinking and his ways of doing. You have to understand God's desire day one was to give Abraham the specific promise. That was God's rich desire. But he can't share stuff with us until we have the right focus and mentality and purpose. You see, we come into the church house and we say, my purpose, my plan, my will, my desire. And the Lord says, but I have something so much greater for you. It's time to get that thinking out of you. If you've been in the church 25 years and still have not received specific promise, you're in good company. And I don't say this as in judgment. I say sometimes this is exactly how long it takes. It's how long it took Abraham. Do you think God is really like that? I just don't want to give you promise because I'm a mean God. No, you are. Woo. Genesis 17 and 1. When Abraham was 90 years old and nigh. The Lord appears unto him again and says, I am the Almighty God. Walk before me. Be watch. Be thou be perfect. I will make a covenant between. He's still reaching for Abraham. I'm not done with you. I, isn't God merciful that even though we're going in the wrong direction, God, still, God can still speak to you with an altar. He can still give you a promise. We can be a jerk all week long. But if we could just make it to Sunday and start to talk to Jesus a bit, he is right there beside us. Abraham fell on his face and God talked with him, saying, As for me, behold, my covenant is with thee, and thou shalt be a father of many nations. Neither shall thy name be any more called Abraham, but thy name shall be Abraham. For a father of many nations have I made thee. And I will make thee exceeding fruitful, and I will make nations of thee, and kings shall come out of thee. It's general. It's, it's awesome. But it's general. This is what I'm doing up the road. Be thou perfect. Walk before me. Separate yourself. Work on your character. I've got great things to show you. And we make the mistake sometimes of thinking that God just doesn't like us to have fun. His purpose is not worldly. His purpose is eternal. Abraham got at church, into church at 75 years old. But he did not receive Isaac until 100. Because it took him 25 years to stop lying. It took him 25 years to stop carrying stuff with him that he should have never carried. It took him 25 years to say, well, Lord, I guess I'm going to stop trying to figure out how to do it. Oh, God had to deal with me this week about that. Driving in the car, I say, well, Lord, this is me not controlling it right now. Anybody? Just don't raise your hand. This is me not controlling it today, Lord. Oh, can't you just give me something? Okay, work on your character. Five years, Abraham has been working on his character. Slowly working on the things he should have been working on day one. But then one day, one day, God shows up for lunch. Genesis 18 and 1. And the Lord appeared unto him in the plains of Mamre. And he sat in the tent door in the heat of the day. Keep going. Then I pause it now. And he lifted up his eyes, and he looked. And lo, three men stood by him. 
And when he saw them, he ran to the master of the house, ran. Ma- masters in the Old Testament didn't run. When he saw them, he ran to meet them from the tent door and bowed himself towards the ground. Why? Because Abraham had already seen him in visions. God had already appeared to him. When God showed up in person for lunch, uh, Abraham knew exactly who it was. It wouldn't be normal custom for three strangers just to walk up to your tent and for, for the master to run and worship. No, no, no. He knew exactly who was coming. There is a relationship you can have with God. There's an intimacy. There's a desire He has for you that He wants to speak plainly and specifically rather than a generic promise here and an oppression there. And he said, my Lord, if I now have found favor in thy sight, pass not away, I pray thee, from thy servant. He's literally begging God. You need to be careful when you come to the church house that you don't wait for God to move you. You're the first person worshiping. I've said this before. Everybody likes position. I'm giving all of you position. You are worship leaders. Everybody's a worship leader in this church. And so I, I, you have all authority. Every time we come into the church house, raise your hands and begin to praise God. Everybody's got a position now. Don't complain. You don't have no position. <laughs> my, and said, my Lord, if now I have found favor in thy sight, pass on. There, there's, a, there's a desire. Oh, he's here. He's here. Let a little water, I pray you be fetched. Wash your feet. Rest yourselves under the tree. I will fetch a morsel of bread, and ye shall comfort you your hearts. After that ye shall pass on, for therefore are you come to your servant. And they said, so do as thou hast said. God is showing up in this house today, waiting to see how we'll entertain his presence. Abraham rushed. Oh, if I found favor. You better be careful when God's presence shows up. Is it okay if I go to the bathroom now? Because I just went 10 minutes ago and will pastor know that I've just gone to the bathroom again. Oh, don't think I don't know. A lot of irritable bowels in this church. I'm just telling you, it's a shame to see such young people. Everybody's laughing except the young people. (laughs) And so we sit back and say, I'm waiting to be entertained. (laughs) But you still got Egypt. You still got the world. No, 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 no. You come into the house of God. (laughs) Hallelujah. You know why Andrew weeps and cries and worships? It's because he knows what God has done for him. And he calls me all the time. He says, Pastor, I just want to be right with God. I don't even need to be used. I just want to be right. And every time he comes into church, he cries and he worships. And God loves it. Make sure you're not one of those that just endure the service to the end. I always wanted to be a worship leader. I always, oh, hallelujah. I always want to be like a David. It doesn't matter who's watching. It doesn't doesn't matter. I just, I love God, and I worship God, and I want to worship God. You got to get that pride set aside and just worship. And you know, there's a very solemn feeling in this house. You know why? It's because there's loving conviction and direction coming in this place. And so when I say that the Lord Jesus Christ is here, could we just stop for a moment and begin to entertain him? Just as Father Abraham did. Could we begin to just lift up a hand and begin to acknowledge him? Oh, we worship you. Oh, great king. 
Oh, we love you, Lord. Oh, there's none like you. He is seeking those to worship him. He is seeking those to desire him. I worship you. I desire you. There's none like you and none beside you. Oh, hallelujah. You don't understand. I've been waiting 25 years for God to come over. I've been waiting all this time. Hallelujah. So that the Lord would come. Oh, don't pass me by. Don't pass me by. I worship you in this house. Come on. Just for a few moments. How would you worship God if you thought he would actually speak to you? How would you worship God if you thought he'd actually show up and do something in your life and your family? Would we sit there and wait? Or would we say, oh God, how can I entertain your presence? Oh, we worship you. Oh, I worship you. I worship you. I worship you. I desire you. You're worthy and worthy to be praised. Oh, I worship you. I have great desire for you, Father. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, ito ho. Jesus. Oh. Oh, you tango steco stamba ye. I worship you. I desire you. There's none like you, Father. Sometimes God's just waiting to see if we'll entertain him rather than the other way around. Oh, I worship you. Uh, you have things that you want to tell your people. You have, you have desires that you want to speak to them, Lord. They've been preparing themselves uh, to receive. Oh, we worship you. Oh, Honda, Jesus. God shows up for lunch. Watch. He doesn't ask for a thing. He just presents himself. He waits for us to respond. We need to remember that. Don't be the person that says, well, maybe in the third song I'll start clapping. Maybe I'll, I wasn't, worship team was off this week, maybe next time. Preach yourself last week. His mere presence. His mere presence. Oh. Hallelujah. Let me interject this. There's nothing wrong with stopping and worshiping God in a church service. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just one more time. I worship you. I lift up my voice and worship and adoration. Oh, Adonai Elohim. Ahad. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, to worship you, I live. To worship you, I live. I live. To worship you. To worship you, I live. Humble Shabaka Seto Ho Etebaho. I live, I live. To worship you. Oh, Shabo Saldero Ho Serero Ho Leke. 
You see, Abraham understood the cost. He'd been living in a wilderness for 25 years. He'd been receiving generic promises. He'd been going to the altar. And God had been working on his character for 25 long years. And he made mistakes and he fumbled. But there was a day when God showed up. And he said, oh no, this is my chance. This is my chance. And this is my opportunity. Verse 6, and Abraham hastened into the tent unto Sarah, said, Make ready quick three measures of fine meal, knead it, make cakes upon the hearth. And Abraham ran under the herd. He ran under the heat. He wasn't going to miss his opportunity. This, do you feel that? This was his moment. This was his time. This was the service that the Lord was going to speak very specifically to him. He ran under the herd and fetched a calf tender and good, gave it unto a young man. He hasted to dress it. And he took butter and milk and the calf which he had dressed and set it before them, which he, he stood while they ate. Lingering, just waiting for God. And they said unto him, Where is Sarah, your wife? He knew exactly where Sarah was. He said, Behold, in the tent. Now watch this. He said, I will certainly return unto thee according to the time of life. And lo, Sarah, thy wife, shall have a son. This time next year, she's having that promise. Wait a minute. Everything's been generic. Everything's been general. Everything's been up the road. But one day, God came over and said, hey, this time... Hallelujah. As the season permits, your wife's going to have a baby. Why? Because Abraham got rid of Lot, and he got rid of the lies, and he got rid of the worldly mentality, and he said, God, I might be in a wilderness, but I'm waiting on you. So God literally comes into the presence and says, now I'm going to speak to you specifically of my plans for your life. Abraham and Sarah were old and well stricken in age. It can't, it can't happen in the natural for some. Oh, God doesn't care about that too much. Sarah laughed, watch, within herself, saying, I am waxed old. Shall I have pleasure, my Lord, being old also? She laughed, not outside, but inside. Don't you laugh. At God's promise for your life. Don't you mock the Lord in your mind. Inside and outside, I receive it. I, re I don't care how crazy it is, Lord. I receive it. I'm walking in it. I'm thanking you for it. She couldn't have kids. God said, that don't matter. She's going to have it anyways. 25 years on. God began to give the exact vision, the exact desire, and the exact timing. Could it be that we live way below where God desires us to live? He has things He desires to share and impart and specifically speak to us. You almost believe me. Watch. Genesis 6, 18 and 16. And the men, the angels, were with the Lord. And Abraham, and they began walking towards Sodom. And the Lord says this, Shall I hide from Abraham the thing which I do? What a strange thing to say from God. Shall I hide? Why? Why separation? Why holiness? Why get out from amongst them and be separate? Why the worldly thinking? Put it away. Why? Because I have things I desire to share with you. I have
have plans that I've wanted to share with you. Just like Adam and Eve in the garden. I got plans that I want to share. I've been waiting. You think you've been waiting. God's been waiting for this day to share his plan with the Abraham in the house. Oh, angels, we're going for lunch today. He's done it. Abraham's done it. He separated himself enough. I get to do what I've always desired to do the first day he left. And in God's heart, in God's emotion, he says, shall I share this? Shall I hide it from Abraham? And he doesn't. He shares his plans for Sodom and Gomorrah with Abraham. And then Abraham's like, no, Lord, you can't do that. Come on, Lord, 50 righteous, 10 righteous. And the Bible says that when God destroyed the city, that he remembered what Abraham said. He took it into account. You can have a relationship with God that he shares his desires with you. Not only for you, but for a nation. Not only for you, but for a great realm. That's why he wants to get you out of the world. That's why he wants you to separate yourself. That's why he wants you to have a relationship with him and pray and study and read his word and stop thinking and reacting like the world does. Why? Because he's got so much to share. He's got so much desire for you. But we're so stuck in this mentality. We create Ishmael's all the time. stand this morning. Jesus. This is what God desires is for each and every one of us. Holiness is not a bad thing. Separation from the world is not a bad thing. It's a beautiful thing. My wife gave up flirting with other men when we got married. Right, honey? Honey? It's not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing. It's a beautiful thing. Committed relationships are beautiful. Marriage is beautiful. Because why? After you've been married for a while, guess what? You know what they're going to say before they even say it. You know what mood they're in just by they say how they say hi on the phone. Oh, boy. There's an intimacy with marriage. You begin to share stuff nobody else knows about. You you begin to share vulnerabilities and hopes and dreams and crazy ideas. Why? Because there's trust and there's intimacy. And so think of God as a loving father that says, finally, I get to share what I've always wanted to share. Finally, I can stop flirting with the world. I get to share all the intimate desires and thoughts I've always had. Should I, should I share this with Abraham? You're the Lord. So why are you? Because that was his heart. And that's his heart for you. And so just every eye closed right now. And let us begin to reach out to the Lord in loving repentance. Lord, you desire me desire me to come out from this world and be separate. Oh, not so that I just can't do stuff I want to do. It's because you have so much you desire to share. And I'm living below where you just, oh God, your heart's desire for me, God. Oh, oh, oh. oh my
Come on. Hallelujah. It's a love affair. It's not religion. It's a love affair. It's a love affair that brought him to the cross. It's a love affair that gave you the promise in the first place. It's not religion. He's got great desire for you. That's it. Just begin to reach out to the Lord right now. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. I need you. Oh, I need you. This altar is open right now. If you have that kind of desire that you want God to get a hold of you like never before, God, I want you to share things with me. I want to have that level of relationship, God, that you want. Come on, we're not going to push you this morning, but if you want this, Hallelujah. Find a place of prayer at the front. I need you. I need you. I'm going to separate myself so you can speak to me. You have plans for me. You have desires for me. Come on, it's loving conviction right now. That's what it is. This is what I feel. It's loving correction. It's loving conviction. Oh, I need you. Himboro basho he. Shira borosha yeso ho. Hira borosha ramba sanda ye. Oh, ribamba rando re taraba sanda rabaha. Humba baboko. That's it. Reach out to the Lord. Jesus. God's desire is to speak specifically to people here in this day. God's desire is to birth specific promises in this house today. That is his desire. He's just waiting for us to match it. Hallelujah. He shall rosa. He shall rosa basa.